welcome to my channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you've been here a while. This will be the first video in a series of many that we are calling the Badass Bag Making Basics. Episode one, today, we're going over edge painting. So I show you how to edge paint this um, snap tab on the Heartbreaker wallet. The key to edge painting, besides all the tips and tricks I'm gonna show you in this video, is practice. You must practice. You can't do this the first time and think it'll be perfect. It probably won't, although these techniques, if you practice them, you will be pretty dang near perfect. So I have edge painted probably 50 wallets at this point. Um, this is using Mojo So's edge paint. I also like Giardini. I use the Giardini base coat. There's also Angelus. They sell different colors and fun glitter ones as well, but um, that's what we're gonna cover today, so let's go. The supplies you need for edge painting um, are gonna be some type of roller or applicator for the paint. This is my current favorite one from Mojo Sews. I like this edge to stir it. Some people use this edge to apply the paint. I like this and it spins super nice. There are these kinds as well. Um, I think this one's also from Mojo Sews, but they sell them on Amazon. I think the key with any applicator is clean it after every coat of anything you do, okay? Other tools you're gonna need are gonna be some kind of way to hold up your project so that it can dry. This is from Mojo Sews, but I've also used just the bottle and set stuff on here. You want the paint to be able to dry totally before you're done. The last thing you're gonna need is some kind of sandpaper. This is one I used forever. It's 3M P, of course it doesn't say, P something. I'll make sure I link it below. It was in my husband's um, toolbox. It's just a fine grit. But my husband's painter friend at work, Reggie, she hipped me to this. It is like a foam with super fine um, sandpaper on one side. And this is a game changer to me because I can easily bend it as I need to. It's so much easier to use. And this stuff is just, it's a different kind of texture. It has like more grit on it or something. I'm not quite sure, but this stuff is amazing you will need this also some kind of paper towel or something to protect your surface with so today we're going to be edge painting this snap tab i made from ks kona designs heartbreaker wallet so the first thing you are going to want to do is make sure all your edges are even I like to, before I assemble anything, make sure I always burn the edges, the fuzzy backs off if I can. Make sure all of these are trimmed like they need to be. If the even more even you can get the edges, the better. You can also just run a lighter along the edges if you need to, just to make sure everything is okay. Fuzzies are no good with paint, okay? Okay, so the formula I use for edge painting is three coats of base coat with a sand in between each, and I usually only need one coat of color. I don't ever put any top coat on my color, but you totally could. There are tons available. There's iridescent ones. Um, I really like the paint from Mojo Sews. In our um, bag making community, she has tons of amazing colors. We're just gonna do white today. Um, another brand I like is Giardini. And there's one I don't have here, but it's called Angelus. They have a, tons of really cool colors. But this is the base coat I use. Max Matte Dense Base Coat from Giardini. What I like to do is mix this with, I get it from the buckle guy. I like to mix it with a little bit of water um, to make sure it's not too thick. If it's thick, you're gonna have lumps and it makes you sand more. So let me get a little container to put this in and we can mix it with some water. 
Another um, little fun, helpful, useful thing. I got these from the dollar store. They're really nice if you want to custom mix your paint color sets. Mojo Sews has like a primary color set and a color card. So you can literally make any color you want. It's not super easy like just buying the exact shade you want, but you can get an exact color match. But this is what we're gonna use today for our base coat. So you can see, I, I don't buy these in the ginormous bottles because they do tend, it's like glue, right? And they kind of tend to get dried out a little bit and gunk up, do you see that? Which is normal. But that's why I like to use these little tiny containers. So also a, a tip with edge paint, do not shake it, okay? You do not wanna shake it. It puts air bubbles and they're kind of hard to get out, so don't do that. It's always like, do you remember when you were a kid and you'd get the uh, nail polish? Would your mom ever tell you, roll it, roll it? It's the same concept. You would want to roll it to stir it, or you can just like use some kind of stir stick, okay? So here's a little bit of our dense coat, and you can see it's it's kind of thick. I'm gonna wa I'm gonna water it down just a little bit. This is just a bottle of water. You don't need a lot, but it does go a long way. It helps a lot. So you're gonna add a little bit of water, mix. It works for colors as well, but if you have a little bit of a water waterier base coat, it's easier to put on. And like I said, it won't um, lump up. You do not want the lumps because it takes forever to sand it down. Okay, that looks like a really good consistency. Kind of drippy, but not like water, okay? That's good. So go ahead and wipe this off. I usually like to have a damp paper towel on my work surface. I don't have one right now, but. Okay, so we are gonna do this three times. Here is my, just make sure I don't have anything hanging out here. I clean this every time with that damp paper towel. You can see it here, okay? So I just dip it in and get enough to where it could kind of drip off, but it's not gonna drip off like that. Do you see? You can also kind of get it a little off. Start at one edge. And this is kind of, I use my pinky as a fulcrum, okay? It helps your hand stay steady. Get a little bit on here. You don't want it like massive gobs amounts. The first coat basically will end up soaking in for the most part. But do you see how we just kind of roll it on there? And kind of overlap where you're done. And you don't want to stop because if you stop and start up again in a few minutes even, you will have a noticeable line, okay? It doesn't matter as much here because like I said, this is the first base coat but it's just a good practice to get into. If you see a bubble, try to roll it out. And be mindful, keep an eye out for any drips, okay? Sometimes you get drips. And it's okay if your surface, your two edges are not completely, totally flat. You don't have to be too crazy about it. The base coat we will be building up so that it will make an even surface for our final paint color, okay? Now at this point, we're gonna wanna turn it over, but we're still continuing on from where we left off, okay? And I'm just kind of gliding, I'm not, physically rolling. I mean, you can, but don't be too concerned about your actual um, tool rolling, rolling. If you get a little on the sides, just wipe it off, okay? You should be able to grab it before any damage happens to your material. I kind of like to wipe it just to make sure anyways, you know? Now be careful of your dips, your valleys. The hills don't usually have problems, but the valleys do. Um, it can build up a lot in this area, so just make sure you don't put too much here. It's hard to sand it out as well. I once did a strawberry stem 
and it was a nightmare in all those valleys. So just be mindful of not putting too much product there. You can see I had a little bubble there and I had smoothed it out. But the pinky really does help, okay? And it, it kind of will make your pinky sore if you're doing a lot of edge painting, but it's just what I do. I'm not gonna edge paint this very edge here, this back bottom, because it's just gonna be in my seam anyways, but I am gonna go all the way to the back here. Okay, there she goes. Now we're gonna let her dry. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure you don't have any visible drips. You can already see it's starting to set up right here. See how it's kind of turning milky colored? And it kind of turns matte and it does suck it in. That's fine, that's what you want. We're gonna go ahead and turn the fan on and let this dry. And I'll come back with the sanding of coat one in a sec. Go clean this right now, right now go clean this. Okay, if you do it every time, it doesn't become an issue. So go clean this off. You don't need to wash it. Just get a damp paper towel and wipe away all of your material, okay? I wanted to show you really quick how this cool thing works. So this is like movable, which is awesome. You can buy these at um, like a hardware store as well if they break or anything. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just it on this back where it's not painted and I kind of am gonna just like you can see here push it up so I can hopefully get everything to pull this way with gravity and I won't have um, any drips like if I tipped it on its side like this I'd probably end up getting a drip here if it was super wet so it's just something to look and look out for okay this is dry and you can see it's dry because it's matte see it. Um, it doesn't need any sanding right now in my opinion because it's still at the stage where it's sucking everything in. So we're going to go ahead and do another coat. Since I just did this a few minutes ago, it doesn't really need to be stirred again. So I'm just going to barely dip it in there. And I'm just barely skimming on top of the edge here. Kind of even it out, go back a little. Now we're starting to get a nice build up. Make sure you don't have too much buildup right here. If you do, kind of tap it out a little bit.
All right, let's let that dry. We will have to, for sure, um, clean your brush. Your roller, clean it off. We will have to, for sure, um, sand on this second go around because now you can see it's starting to not um, sink in anymore. My fan is on in my room, so it's kind of drying it. So you have to be quick if you're gonna have a fan on while you're painting. I would advise if you're a beginner, just turn off all fans and then take this to the room with the fan and let it dry in there. But do you see how we have a little lump right here? That is um, what you gotta be mindful of when you're drying. And that's like that from having too much product and then it being upside down when we're painting up here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put it like this and let it dry again. Okay, at this point, you can see this is nice and dry. I can feel it, it doesn't feel tacky. If it feels even a little tacky, do not sand it, okay? But you can kind of see the matteness, how it turns like matte, do you see? So now we can do a light sanding. I don't really have that many bubbles. Honestly, if I wasn't filming this, I probably wouldn't even sand between this coat. Sometimes it'd be like that. So I'm gonna lightly sand and then we'll do our third, our third base coat and that's good. After three, you really don't need much, especially if you've taken the time to trim up and make sure all the edges are pretty even. Um, sometimes if it's a thicker, um, like when we do the final edge painting on the wallet, it'll be thicker. That might need, uh, you know, maybe a, maybe a fourth coat. You just kind of want to build up this edge so that the paint can just glide on and dry and be done. I, like I said, I like to do only one coat of color if I can. So let's go ahead and sand this and then we will do our fourth coat, or I'm sorry, our third coat of base coat. Okay, so I just get this little, I'm going to use this foam super fine and I'm just lightly, lightly rubbing. Like I said, this lady that's been a painter all over the world for like 50 years, she gave my husband this and said it's the best for sanding stuff for painting. And it is. You can see I kind of round this around. Okay, I'm kind of if you're using just regular paper, just kind of make a little, see how it's going over. I kind of do that, okay? Because you kind of want it to be a rounded. And you may get little tiny bits coming up that came onto your exterior vinyl, and that's fine. Just peel them out. I'm just going to do a light sand. If you have bubbles, sand them away, okay? This is why I said valleys are hard to sand. See how I have this little tiny thing here? Just take it off. That's why I kind of like to wipe if I can. And if you see a bump, just give it a little extra attention. Make sure it's nice and flat. But there's really no good way to sand in the valley, so that's why I was like, just be careful. Don't do it too much now because you know you want to build up the edge not take it away if you can help it and you can see when you sand it it turns from matte to you get like this little white okay so just watch what you're doing drip down here. I think it's pretty good. If you can catch it when it's tacky, sometimes you can just kind of tap like this with your finger and a drip goes away. All right, that looks pretty good. Get your damp paper towel. This is important. Do not leave sand and dust on your make before you add another coat, okay? Nobody wants that gritty stuff. If you're having a lot of lumps and having to sand a lot, maybe go sand somewhere else and come back to your painting spot but it is important to wipe off in between, in my opinion. All right, let's do our third coat. All 
By this point, you kind of have an edge built up and you might need to kind of make sure you're touching on both sides, okay? You don't want to miss a spot because you will notice. And I kind of like to just put it on thick and mush it around. I don't usually physically like roll. And I'll check over here and just see like, oh, it's kind of lumpy right here. You can wipe a little bit. See how there's a little bit of buildup right there? You don't want that. Trust me, you cannot sand it that well. I moved my um, painting area because it's like more airflow over here. So kind of just dip this down in the dip, but pull it out. Use some kind of tool to like touch in there, a Q-tip, something. There's like a little bump here. Can you see it a little bit? It's okay. We can sand it off later. Just leave that. Sanding really cleans up stuff nicely. Just get this stuff on there. Oop, went over the edge. Then I just wipe it away. If you see any hairs or anything, make sure you just pull them out. Get some tweezers. You don't really want to leave those in there if you get little animal furries. Okay, I think that looks pretty dang good. I'm going to clean off my tool really quick. If you do this every time, you never have to wash it. Okay, close that up. Let's just triple check. It looks pretty good. This little spot right here we'll be able to take care of on our sanding next. My dip doesn't look too bad. I got a little lumpy right in there, but that's fine. We'll be able to sand it out. It does get lumpier the more coats you put, so just be mindful of that. But it looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and let this guy dry. And I'll be back for final sand and the top color coat. Okay, I'm just going to use these little tiny scissors. And do you see like this little piece of crud here? I'm just going to trim it. Okay. Go ahead and do your final sand. Just real light. Don't push on it too much, okay? Make sure everything looks not lumpy. And I'm barely pressing. Okay, here's where that little piece of crud was, lightly sanding. Okay. 
You can see I have like a little lump. Do you see it? Make sure your base coat is dry before you do this. Depending on where you live, it might take a while. Okay, this isn't a fast process. Um, I live in the desert, so it takes maybe 30 minutes to totally be dry. Tiny piece, there we go. So this foam is better for like, if you have bigger lumps, it seems to take it off faster. This is good for making the round because you can kind of like pull it over like that, okay? Get your damp rag and dust it, please dust it. Get the dust off of it, check it, inspect it for any little cruds hanging over, any hairs, okay? Now we're gonna go in with color. I'm gonna use, I wanted to check my mojo paint. So you do want a watery -er consistency. Sometimes um, mojo ones get thicker. You can just add water to it. This one looks pretty good. See the consistency? That's what you want. Um, compared to the Giardini. I used this one yesterday. And let me just wipe this off. See, it's kind of the same. There's just a little thicker. They're both great. Let me just bring something a little different to the table. Okay, we're going to use Mojo for the purposes of this. I already rolled this, so you can see there's minimal air bubbles in there. Just kind of dip it where the air bubbles aren't, okay? Remember, don't get a huge clump. The goal is to only do this one time, okay? Here we go. My fan is on, so that may not be a good thing. Start at the edge here, okay? You're gonna kind of want to rotate this front to back to make sure the paint touches both sides because now that you have three layers on there it might um, need to make sure it rolls onto the other side a little bit make sure you get out air bubbles you'll be very upset if you don't But I mean, worst case scenario, if you mess up, you just sand it and do another coat. It's not gonna hurt it, you know?
touch yet at all. I want to touch it. I'm getting pretty shaky here. There you go. So I'm just rolling it on kind of both sides. I'm kind of mushing it on both sides because you could just theoretically totally miss this edge here if you didn't do that because we did build up that edge. And you don't want that. The goal is to do this one time. You know? I mean, you definitely need to make sure you have enough on your roller brush when you're applying it. Because if you don't have enough, then you get this streakiness and uneven application. Okay. Let's check this divot here. Looking pretty good. We're in the home stretch. I will note, I've had these edge paints for quite a while, since last year. Um, probably like the middle of last year, and they're fine. I live in the desert, but just so you know, they've lasted just as long as my Giordini ones. Heavy handed on that last push there. Just kind of pull it off. Check this side. See, it needed a little bit right here. I don't know how to explain it, but you can totally see where you need it. Okay, that's it. Let's check our valleys. You can see it's drying up well. You just want to make sure you don't have any dips. Um, or any drips, I mean. But let me just put the lid. I already um, kind of wiped off my applicator. Really make sure you wipe your applicator off quickly. Okay. So you can see. It is beautiful. Okay. I don't see any drips or uneven spots. I'm going to keep it drying like this again. And then I'll be back and hopefully we'll be done with that. After your paint dries, you can see how shiny and amazing it looks. And now you're ready to install it or just be done with your make. This is just absolutely gorgeous. I love how it looks like it has a gloss on it. Um, I do not remember Giardini doing this. This is no um, gloss coat. This is one, one coat of color of Mojo Sos of the white. It's amazing. <laughs>